We're given two functions, f and g, and they bound a region R. We have to find the area, then we have to rotate that region R around an axis to get a volume of revolution, and then we're going to use R as the base for a solid built out of cross sections. So to handle those various tasks, these are the sorts of formulas that we need. And let's start with A. All we have to do in A is find the area of this region. Now, we find areas by slicing the region up into infinitesimally thin rectangles. We can either slice them top to bottom or we can slice them left to right. But our bias is towards slicing them top to bottom because the formulas themselves, here let me just show you, okay, well, the formulas themselves are given as a function of x and if we slice top to bottom then that makes our infinitesimal dx which means the integral will be with respect to x. So because there's a clear greater curve and a lesser lesser curve in this orientation, there's no need to really consider doing the horizontal orientation instead because in that case we'd have to compute the inverses of these functions and there's no reason to do that. So we're going to say that the area of region R is an integral with respect to dx and therefore it's going to go over the limits of x integration 0 to 2 and we have a greater curve clearly g of x minus a lesser curve and that's going to be f of x. I'm going to split that up into two separate integrals so we've got the integral 0 to 2 of g of x minus the integral 0 to 2 of f of x. That way I can call this result i1, this result i2, and when I take the difference I found the area of the region. Just because they want us to actually do this computation, I just want to save a little space. Okay, so let's start with i1. I1, we have to do 4 cosine pi over 4x dx. We're going to do a u substitution to handle that. So let's figure out what that needs to be. We'll make u equal to pi over 4x, therefore du dx will be pi over 4, and as a result, we'll be, we can reconfigure this and say that dx, for dx we can substitute uh, 4 du over pi. Okay, so now we have i1 equals integral from x equals 0 to 2, since we're switching to work in terms of u, cosine of u dx we're going to write as 4 over pi du. Okay, so going just a little further, i1 therefore is going to be 16 over pi. Now what's this integral? Cosine du. That's going to be sine of u. And what is u? u is pi over 4x. That's what we have to integrate from 0 to 2. Well, let's see. Uh, when we put a 2 in here, we're going to get 2 pi over 4, which is the same as pi over 2. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. So we're going to get 16 over pi times 1, minus, when we put a 0 in for x, then we have the sine of 0, which is 0. So I1 is simply 16 over pi. I2, we have to integrate from 0 to 2. 
and we have to write this function. Now, I see that there's a 2 in common that we can factor out, so we may as well do that so we can work with smaller numbers. x squared minus 3x plus 2 dx. What's that going to be? Well, let's see. We've got 2 times x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 plus 2x, all evaluated from 0 to 2. Okay, again note that when we plug in 0, the result will be 0. So all we really have to worry about is the 2. So 2 is going to give us 2 cubed, that's 8. Minus, minus 3, three x, x squared, squared that gives us give 4, so this is going, going to turn into 12, 12. plus 2x, that's going to be 4. Okay, so what do I have? I have 8 thirds minus 6 plus 4. Minus 6 plus 4, that's minus 2. 8 thirds minus 2. That's 8 thirds minus 6 thirds. So I2 equals... 8 thirds minus 6 thirds is 2 thirds. So we have I2 equals 4 thirds. And so the area is uh, 16 over pi minus 4 thirds. A lot of computation there. Good to check your work. Make sure you haven't made some small mistake. Now parts B and C require no computation at all, but quite a bit of visualizing and understanding how to construct formulas. So I've pre-drawn some of this because it's hard enough to visualize without my poor real-time drawing skills. So let's see, what does B ask for? B wants us to revolve this region around the line y equals 4. So here's that line y equals 4 here. And we're revolving around it like that. So that's going to swing this whole region up and back around. It looks something like this that I've drawn. And then we'll slice it up into disks. Okay, The width of each disk is going to be dx and so we'll sum up the area of each of these disks times its infinitesimal width. The difficulty is I say disks but this is really a washer problem because we have an intersection that has to be carved out and so rather than think of this as washers, I find it sometimes more helpful for students to view this as um, taking one volume and then carving out the other, something more like this. Okay. So we have this outer curve that gives us a solid. And then we have to subtract off from it another solid, which is formed by constructing the inner curve. Okay. So we're going to write this, rather than two terms inside a single integral, we're going to write this as two separate integrals. And I'll call this the carve-out method of handling these uh, washer problems. So our limits of integration, because we're integrating with respect to dx, are going to be from 0 to 2. Okay. And we form disks whose area is pi r squared, pi times something squared, and this will be a similar problem. And so the question is, what is the something? What is the radius here of this solid? Well, the radius, which is a function of x, goes from here 
down to here. Okay, that's what we're going to call r of x. So what is that? That's 4 minus f of x. And so that's what goes here. 4 minus f of x. And I don't want to write f of x out. We've got the definition here. So I would just leave it in that form. And what about this? Well, here we have another r that's traditionally known as little r. This is also a function of x. And what's the distance here from here to here? Well, that's going to be 4 minus this g of x curve. So 4 minus g of x. And so that's what goes in here for little r. 4 minus g of x. So the volume, this is the volume calculation. I'll just say volume equals. <coughs> okay, and we don't have to calculate it, we just had to set it up. So now we're finally on part C, which is going to be a cross-sectional area style volume. That's why I've drawn this down here. We're going to be working with a cross-sectional area that's defined based on cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis. So that's why I've drawn this line. And then they say that there are squares that project out from the page. So I've tried to draw in a square whose side is the length of this line. The infinitesimal is clearly dx. So now we know what to integrate with respect to. And we also know the limits of integration. And the cross-sectional area is that of a square. So let's think about what this square is as a function of x. <coughs> Formula for a square is the side as a function of x squared. And so all that's left for us is what is this side? Well, it is the distance between the G curve and the F curve. And so S of X equals uh, G of X minus F of X. So putting all of this together, we have that the volume is going to be an integral from 0 to 2 of the side squared and the side itself is g of x minus f of x.